I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather is clear, can do, can do. Hello, racing fans, and welcome back to a special edition of Handicapper's Corner. It's our BC Cup yes. uh, Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads, along with Drew Forrester. We're going to go through the nine-race program, which includes six stakes races, one BC Bread Marathon race, and two uh, maiden allowances uh, to, to encompass. That, that's the entire nine-race card. Uh, it's going to be a great afternoon. The weather's supposed to be awesome, and uh, we get to see the best horses uh, participate all in one day. Yeah, it's always one of our uh, signature days, as you mentioned before. This and uh, BC uh, Derby Day are kind of our two big days of the year. Yeah. You definitely want to make it out. It's always a really fun atmosphere. We'll get a big crowd out and some very good races to wager on. As Mike mentioned, nine on the card. It kicks off with a maiden special weight for three and up. Colts and Galdians going six and a half furlongs. Field of five in here. I went to the newcomer, the three out of the John Snowborn. Uh, Gordy Kristoff bought this out of a sale down in Kentucky recently. Brave Nation. Good second at Tampa in a maiden special weight. Most recently, third as the favorite in a maiden special weight at Churchill going to mile 16th. He does get to shorten up a little bit here to six and a half. But I just, you know, you see these horses coming from other places. If you run in third in a maiden special weight yeah. at Churchill, you're going to be pretty tough here. So I'm going with the newcomer, Brave Nation. Over the other horse that obviously, I, these would be the two I'd have my early pick three. Brave Nation, the chances are Lamel Snowbarn. Second behind Appalachie Bay, two starts ago. He's probably going to go postward as your favorite in a three-year-old stake today. Uh, Pe drift kind of ducked out mm -hmm. the last minute last time Panhandle caught him at the wire, but he's knocking on the door. He could win this one, that's for sure. Uh, it's those two. Pick one for third. I threw in Random Act. Uh, went long last time, gets back to a sprint. The other Mel Snow runner, Silvino Morales rides. Three, four, and one for me. Yeah, the snows are, are deep in here. We got two Johns, two Mel's, and a Deirdre Bell to make up this field of five. And uh, I think Mel's going to win it with the four chance. The chances are, not because I don't think Brave Nation is every bit as good or even a better horse, but it just looks like it's the chances are his distance. It doesn't, yeah. Brave Nation does not look to me to be a sprinter as of yet. I, you know, just looking at his form, he's. All of his races with Belmont were, were going along, and uh, there's a reason, perhaps, why they wanted to do that. But uh, uh, maybe he's just classy enough to overcome it, and he'll win anyway. But I'll, I'll take the chances are with Miguel Rodriguez and to win it over Brave Nation. And I, I agree, I put the one. Someone for third, uh, put the one random act. 4-3-1 in the uh, Monday opener. On to the second race, uh, just kick off the pick five. Stay tuned for any details of a yeah. carryover because it was at forty nine hundred dollars going into the uh, Friday night card. Maiden special weight uh, for fillies and mares. You're sprinting six and a half. Uh, I wanted the two trooper Jenny. Uh, I didn't fall in love with anyone, so I just went with a first time starter for, with good connections, good pedigree. Spent some money on the horse and. Uh, Richard Hamill and Craig do well together, and uh, the work tab's been excellent, yeah. so let's try something different. I'm going to try Trooper Jenny to defeat the logical choice. Number seven, Dory's Darling, just missed against Bear last time. Bear did not come back to fair very well, but he ran, he, she ran okay against winners. But uh, Dory's Darling's had two good, decent races so far this spring and summer. And I put the three horse, Joy Luck, in for third. I just thought there was a lot of speed in the race, and she might be able to tag along late and get a chunk of it because uh, she, she was only in for Maiden 25 her last couple starts. I know they've been waiting to run her long, but uh, no long races going other than running against Here's Hannah and Tony Ann's Miracle, which was perhaps an option, but uh, did not use it. And uh, But she's been working well, and I just see a lot of speed. Trooper Jenny might be speed. Bad and Boogie coming up from uh, California speed. Lady LaRue's speed. Joni B. True wants to be a speed horse. Blinker's on, too. And Dory's Darling. I just saw about yeah. Three quarters of the field wants to go to the front. There's someone may tag, you know, third money, and that might be Joy Luck. I went, uh, but I like the two, Trooper Jenny. Two, seven, three. I agree. I like Trooper Jenny, too. Good work to have. Well bred daughter of uh, Colonel John. Uh, live connections. Pretty much everything Mike touched on there. I put Bad and Boogie in the second spot. Just we've seen a lot of these Peter Redekop horses coming up from Southern California. They've been very tough. This girl's been running basically for bottoms down there, Maiden 30, Maiden mm -hmm. 20. Uh, but still, I, you know, she's fit enough. She just ran the 12th of July. She's shortening up to a sprint. She looks like she's got speed. Anything that uh, these guys bring up here has been dangerous. I didn't want to leave her out of my ticket. I put Bad and Boogie in the second spot. And, of course, as you mentioned, Dory Starlin. Been knocking on the door behind side. A nice feeling like sharp contrast and bear. It could be graduation day for her. Two, four, and seven for me in the second. On to the third. We get to kick off the stakes uh, here with the uh, three-year-old Phillies in the Hong Kong Jockey Club. I went to the one Tony Ann's Miracle out of the Phil Hall barn. Uh, 
defeated here's Hannah comfortably two starts ago, uh, beating Cypress Park by four and a half in the Emerald Downs. Broke brutal last time, got pinched out, yeah. never really got into the race. It was just a, a throwaway race for, for me. Uh, I'm not giving up on her. Again, the connections of Phil Hall and Peter Redekop, Amadeo Perez. I'm going to give Tony Az Miracle another try today's distance. Got her on top of here's Hannah, who's going to be the favorite. Only been beaten once in her life. That was in the Emerald Downs, where uh, she got uh, pressured pretty hard in the head end and faded a little bit. Still only got beat about five, six lengths, but uh, rebounded with a big effort last time, getting a 74 buyer. Her in second, those are the two. And uh, actually, I don't mind Tiptoe either. I can see Tiptoe run a big one. Broker Maiden first out. She's you know hasn't had the kind of season. Tony and Miracles run 13 times. Here's Hannah making her seventh start today. Mm -hmm. Tiptoe, Broker Maiden first start, came back crushed a non-two allowance field, and I thought ran really good in the Supernatural. This could be a filly that's going to be a bit of a price that could be well worth playing in here, and uh, I have her in the third spot. I went one, four, and six. Yeah, I, I went to tiptoe. I mean, nice. here's Hannah's the horse to beat. Yeah. No doubt. Here's Hannah's a really nice filly. When, uh, you know, she does, does have the one blemish when she, uh, for whatever reason, didn't run a race in the Emerald Downs and was... Uh, you know, was destroyed by Tony Ann's miracle that day, but uh, uh, she was drawing her game and, and ran very well last time. But I was really impressed with Tiptoe's race, with like you mentioned, no seasoning, two uh, you know comfortable wins against uh, restricted horses, a maiden race and a non-two lifetime race, and then you get in against the big girls and. She broke well. She sat behind the pace. She was running on every bit as good, even maybe even better than here's Hannah at the end of the yeah. race. I think she's got a lot of upside, and she's going to move forward, I believe, and uh, get a, you know, a couple more pounds. Here's Hannah. I only got two pounds from here's Hannah last time. Uh, going to get four, and uh, there's some pace pressure in here. here. Under par is out there to you know, maybe wreck the party. Uh, seven times 70s yeah. fast. Tony Ann's Miracle is going to break this time, I would think. Tiptoe's going to get a nice pace scenario. I thought she was, just because of the dynamics of the race, mm -hmm. I, I like Tiptoe. Here's Hannah, is definitely the horse to beat. She's, you know, running well for John Morrison, and, and they're, I mean, she's, the only reason I'm not picking her is just because maybe things may go wrong during the opening half mile for her. May, if they go right, then she wins by and again. She's, she's going to be three to five. Yeah, that too. I mean, so she's going to be the heavy favorite. Trying to beat her. But uh, she's worked well. She's, she's come out of the race well. She's, 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 you know, a real champion, and she looks it. But I just, you know, from a betting perspective, I want to give a person a, a little more value. I, that's the only reason I'm going to tiptoe. The one Tony Ann's miracle, I put her in for third. Uh, she still has to prove to me she can go long. I know we didn't find anything out last time because she botched the start, but I don't like the fact that she broke slow. And uh, here's a horse that's never missed a break in her life. Why are you missing the break going long and, and getting, being able to get squeezed? Usually, mm -hmm. You can't get squeezed if you break on top. If you're top. on the lead, yeah. <laughs> and, right. and she broke half a length or three quarters length slow and was sandwiched in, uh, a couple of times. But still, she needs to prove to me she, she can run long. She's run five, six, seven furlongs, and that's it. And, uh, but the other ones look good. I went six, four, and one. But I think there are a lot of talent in that race between the three of them. On to the fourth race. This is the BC Cup Distaff. A uh, mile on the 16th will be the distance. And I'm going to go to the seven. Yukon Bell, hopefully can, she can get her first stakes win in, since a two -year -old, her two-year-old season. But uh, she just keeps running into some quality fillies. Ran into Elliford Bay, who went to Seattle. Ran into top quality, went to Seattle. Yeah. Went into Victress. Victress is going to Seattle. Uh, everything that uh, beats her seems to just uh, scoot off to Emerald Downs. They want to get away from her. They yeah, I know. Maybe they're, twice. <laughs> they're scary. I don't want her to get that little. She's about 14 hands. Yeah. She's barely 15 hands if she is. But uh, she's just a little thing, but she's all heart. Uh, she's pretty versatile, too. There is some speed in the race, you know, with Don't Tell Judy and Peach Pike, who are, you know, obviously lesser in quality, but still they can they will affect the pace. And uh, good luck to you. You'll be out there. So, But Yukon Bell has some versatility to her. She doesn't need the lead or. She can come from off the pace a little bit as well. So I like her to win it. Notice that Jewel's going to get a good pace scenario. Reunited with winning pilot Richard Hamill again. He won the uh, the uh, Delta Colleen yeah. and the Ballerina last year aboard the daughter of Stefan Otis. So I think she'll be a, she gets a good break in the weights. Uh, there's a four pound weight shift between the two. You'll notice the Jewel and Yukon Bell. So uh, she'll be tough as well. And I put the two touching prom. I'm not going to totally give up on her. The tracks changed too. They put the fiber in it now. Mm -hmm. And we should note to everyone that there's now. They've added fiber to the track. You know, a lot of the horsemen were complaining they're getting certain injuries with horses and because it's a little loose. And Touching Promise is one that needs a track sloppy and tight. And she got these loose tracks. And she's been, 
you know, maybe she doesn't want to run at all. I don't know, but she hasn't been on a racetrack that she's liked yet. And uh, maybe with the track, with the fiber being in it, the track will be a little tighter, and she may be a, a little more of the touching promise that we know that's earned over four hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. So uh, uh, I, I put her in for third. I didn't. I didn't want to leave her out. I went seven four two. Uh, I went to the three. Good luck to you. She's daughter of Bellamy Road. Uh, hasn't. I mean, she's. Tr tried this distance four times. She does have a win at today's distance. She's actually got the best Tomlinson number for the distance. At the head of the lane the other day, I thought she was going to beat Yukon Bell, but uh, she'd been pressing the pace. Just the lane that's off Yukon Bell couldn't quite get to her, but I'm thinking maybe today she can turn the tables on her. I promised Ryan I wouldn't pick Yukon <laughs> Bell. I'm trying to get him in the winner's yeah. circle. And Put the curse on him. Those are the two I like. I really like Good Luck to You and Yukon Bell. I think the race is between those two. Uh, I got Yukon Bell, or sorry, Good Luck to You on top of Yukon Bell. And I threw in Curly's figure. I don't want to give up on her. Three starts this year, all in stakes. She's hit the board every single one of them. Third, second behind Alaford Bay. Third behind Top Quality and Yukon Bell. Third last time in Alberta. She's, they're sending her back out here. I can see her being tough today. I went three, seven, and one in the distaff. On to the debutante, the fifth race for two-year-old girls, field of uh, eight in here. And I went to the uh, five, Billy, for uh, our good friend Praven Sorensen, yep, daughter of first dude, first asking. Also, she went around two turns her first start, which I like. She went six furlongs, made no mistake, drew off to win by five. I think this really has a fair bit of talent for Phil Hall. Praven Sorensen, Enrique Gonzalez naturally sticks with her. She got a 57 buyer in that race. If she runs that back, she's going to be tough to beat in here. I got Billy on top of Honky Tonk Woman, who uh, just had the one start. Good second behind Stay Fantastic. Ran in a mixed maiden special weight, obviously, this time of year for two-year-olds. Right. And I thought made a good account of herself. She's a uh, well-bred daughter of violence. They paid a good price for the sale. She's in good hands in the Anita Bolton barn. She gets the services of Richard Hamill. That's not going to hurt her chances. Honky Tonk Woman in my second spot. And I threw in GMT. There's another Phil Hall horse in here. Uh, daughter of Shrug. Uh, a half sister to Lord Vancouver, who we've seen, uh, he's yep. had success nice around nice stakes for us. BC yeah. Cup Day before. Amadeo Perez, rise number three, GMT, baby. I didn't want to leave her out either. Five, seven, and three for me. Yeah, I agree. Billy's the horse to beat. I mean, it's definitely uh, Enrique Gonzalez. He, he's got his hand fingerprints all over this race. He rode the... GMT, the, baby, GMT uh, baby, the three, the seven, about. the eight, notice. notice, and he also, you know, he ends up on, he wrote four of the top contenders in the race, and he ends up on the five, Billy, uh, who was a very comfortable winner. Sat the trip out in the three path and uh, did comfortably uh, cruise home and finished the last 16th of a mile pretty quickly, did Billy, and I just, you know, she's been off for a while, though, but uh, has two good works and looks to be, you know, the barn's still going great guns, and uh, Billy's definitely your horse to beat. I agree with the seven, Honky Tonk Woman, uh, you know, did some things wrong in her debut, but uh, she'll learn from that. She's coming back a little quickly in just 15 days, but, uh, you know, for a young horse. Uh, but she's looks like she's got some upside and some ability, and uh, another one that hails from a top barn. And you're right, Richard Hamill board certainly won't hurt her chances. I threw the four in dancing shoes for Barb. Uh, this horse has shown some a lot of ability in the mornings. Uh, her works are a little slower than they should be, uh, just because she's been waiting for company in those workouts. She's a big gray filly that uh, on the first crop of cross traffic, and uh, he was a nice horse in the uh, Todd Pletcher barn. Uh, but she's looked the part, and Antonio's been on her a lot in the mornings, and I thought she was worth a look as well. Uh, I, I, but Billy's the horse to beat. I went five, seven, and four in the debutant. On the sixth race, this is the, the uh, BC Cup Marathon. Big one. For horses that have started for 8,000 or less in the past uh, two years, 2017, 2018. And uh, they're going a mile and three eighths, 11 furlongs here. And uh, everybody wanted to run on the back stretch, it seems, as we have four pages of form. Uh, we have 12 horses in the lineup, and I'm going to go to the far outside, to Lucky Ending, who's been running, probably keeping the best company. He is just a winner of one race. Uh, we must remember that, mm -hmm. so let's not go overboard. He's just broke his maiden only. But he was a, it was, it was a good fourth, I thought, to Hanson's victory. Absolutely stylish in spring in Alberta. Like the top two finishers are going to be a, a little later on today in the Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, but Lucky Ending fun is... In against eight thousand dollar types because he was actually eligible for a four thousand starter. He did run for four uh, last last spring, but uh, he's come a long way. He he's run well in the marathon in the past. He lost to his stablemate. Yeah. What goes around on BC Cup Day last year as a three year old. Uh, he's shown he can run the distance, and he's not facing a super tough field. The horses to beat for him are definitely Silent Eagle, 
perfectly reckless and all under control. Those would be the three horses that you would think would yeah. perhaps upset him. The 12 hole equalizes things a bit and 121 pounds equalizes things a little bit, but I still like him to win it. I put Silent Eagle in for second. He's coming back quickly off of a, I thought a pretty hard race running fourth behind Ace Deuce and uh, City Steel and Royal Briar in a 16 down to 12-5 race. Uh, but he ran good. He just barely got beat for second late. And uh, those are way better horses, uh, Ace Deuce, City Steel and Royal, Royal yeah. Briar. And uh, I just thought he, you know, mile and three eighths. Maybe Andrew can get him to stretch it out another, uh, you know, it's, it's another half a mile and uh, we'll see. But uh, he's, another, he's running great right now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is. And uh, I put the one horse, I was between the one or two, all under control or perfectly reckless. They're both kind of similar to me. Perfectly reckless coming back quickly too in 10 days, but still he looked good winning and then on 3-8, all under, all under control, kind of got crushed on the pace behind Ace Deuce last time. They did battle on the head end and he finished well back, but he's got some class to him too. He's a neat horse, so all under control when he's on his game, but he's kind of, I don't know, he's just been ordinary so far in this last couple and maybe he'll be better today at this you know, devalued level. But I went 12, 5, and 1. Uh, I agree with you. Lucky ending. Just missed in this race last year, as you mentioned, got beat by his uh, stable mate. Was a maiden, that's, a, you know, the, the, the one not against him, he was a maiden forever. Right. But he did win a maiden special weight. Two starts back in a 66 buyer over Chef, Ace of Diamonds. Most, a lot of these horses in here are running like in four and on twos. Yeah, it's conditional. Basically, kind of these races. are less, you know, 8,000 or less type yeah. horses. And this horse just ended up running for 8,000. Got year, good, and got good, and, and got better. Yeah. And uh, that's, I'm going to go with him too. I really like Lucky Ending. Got him on top. I put all under control in the second spot. Uh, I think he will get the distance, and they could go that race two back. Uh, only got to be a couple weeks behind Square Dancer, Handsome Chef, Sergeant Rick. Those are miles better horses than what he's, you know, lined up with generally in here, except for a few, as you mentioned. Uh, but I think all under control will get the distance for trainer Mike Anderson. I can see him being a force in here. And uh, I agree with Silent Eagle. I'm in the third spot. He's kind of the now horse. He's ran two really good races in a row. You know, he got beat for 8,000 by... Ten lengths behind uh, willing to travel Citron mm -hmm. Kid Ace Deuce. Those are tough horses. Don't get me wrong. Went to a four non winners of the year, gutted it out at twenty three to one and one. Went up to a sixteen. He ran into Ace Deuce City Steel World Bar. Wasn't disgraced. Mm -hmm. Ran he a very right good there. race. Uh, he's definitely a horse going the right way. The distance is a question for him, but I didn't want to leave him off my ticket. I got twelve two and five in the marathon. On to the uh, seventh race. Two-year-old boys in the nursery. Field of eight here, and uh, this will be my best bet of the day, Vintage Man. Second behind, the only time he's been beat is Summerland, as we mentioned, yeah. who uh, will be running on uh, Sunday in, uh, in uh, actually, we just got the form. She's running in Sunday at uh, Del Mar. Second behind her in her first start. Then he ran a maiden 75, crushed, one by five. Came back, looked like he was going to beat Summerland. R loomed <laughs> right run. up on her yeah. on the outside, she and she <laughs> had more uh, jogged away from him. Um, but uh, the field he's in here, I think he beats this field, and I think he beats it fairly handily, quite honestly. There's some good horses. Bugsy's a decent horse. Uh, Stay Fantastic, I don't mind. Dat Day. But I think Vintage Man is my most likely winner on the card. I'm sticking with him. Vintage Man on top of Bugsy. If somebody upsets him, I think it's him. He just got beat uh, by a couple by him in the Spaghetti Mouse, uh, that race that we mentioned, the Summerland one. Before that, he won uh, Maiden Special Weight over Move On, who came back to win a Maiden Special Weight. Numani's reward was in there, too. That wasn't a terrible field that he beat that day. And uh, stay fantastic. One start, beat Honky Tonk Woman, who he Now, if Honky Tonk Woman goes out and crushes the girls' race, keep an eye on Stay Fantastic. He's a well-bred son of uh, Stay Thirsty for the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, a homebred of theirs. And uh, to win a maiden special, was a big field of nine. He broke from the one hole into, uh, you know, he came up the rail. Ran well. He was a little pro. He yeah, a, under nice David Lopez. Pro. To do that in his first start, I was super impressed by, and I could see him taking a big step forward in his second start. Seven, eight, and six for me. Yeah, I've got this kind of the same horses. Uh, I don't love Vintage Man as much as you do, but I did take him on top. I mean, these I are two-year-olds. These are two-year-olds that uh, they can have a bad day, and uh, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're not as reliable as the older horses. But I do. You're right. Vintage Man's form is better than anyone else in here, and he, he's on paper, he is the one to beat. So if he does lose, the eight horse Bugsy is would be the next best horse. He's kind of been chasing Vintage Man around, and uh, uh, I think a better draw for Bugsy. I think he liked the outside when he broke his maiden. He did run yeah. race three wide the entire trip, and he was kind of down on the inside eating dirt last time, and he he didn't really care for it. 
he's going to be maneuvered to the outside right away because he's got the eight hole with Amadeo Perez, and I think he'll be alive. And I put the three that day. I was between that day or stay fantastic yeah. for third, but uh, I put that day in the mix. Uh, I thought a good runner-up effort uh, uh, in his first try going two turns behind move on. 7-8-3 for me in the uh, nursery. On to the eighth race, uh, this is the BC Cup Classic. Mile and an eighth will be the distance. Going to back it up a bit. Uh, field of uh, 10 in here. Uh, Another big field. Yes. I got one of the two. Don't hold me back. Uh, I thought this horse ran a... I love Calgary Caper last time. You know, I thought he'd be even better than five and a half to one, but he was still a very nice horse at $13. He's probably going to get another great pace to run out again, Calgary Caper, and he is the horse to beat. But don't hold me back. I thought he ran a really good race considering he was wide. Uh, didn't get a great trip uh, on the hot pace. And I think moving inside six pound weight shift with Calgary Caper. He only got beat a length for second by Modern and Colterbury. Uh, but he, and he had a, the worst trip of all of them by a mile. He was wide on every turn and uh, just nothing nothing went right for Don't Hold Me Back that day and the horse just kept on running. So uh, I, I, I like him uh, maybe to upset uh, Calgary Caper up at the five Hanson's victory. I like him out of the two uh, Glenn yep. Todd runners. I know Grider's on the other one, but still this one is I think has a lot of upside. He's going in the right direction. I know he ran a good final time, but he was helped by the fact that he had a pretty comfortable lead. But I just think he light wants to go long, and he's he, he certainly looked like it last time, easily defeating, absolutely stylish. But I thought you know, I left out Driller, who I, I will rebound. He had a yeah. terrible beginning last time; he had no trip at all. Had to rush up and chase those hot fractions. Crazy Prophet didn't like Golden Gate or Pleasanton, and he's he might get a good pace to run out at mm -hmm. big odds, and he 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 would be worth a look too. He's always liked Hastings in the past. Venetian Mask, New Barn, who knows? Maybe something will go a little better for him, but uh, a very good uh, renewal of uh, the BC Cup Classic, but I'm going to try the two Don't Hold Me Back. I went two, four, and five. I went to the horses that have that are proven the distance. I know it's only, you know, we run a mile 16th all the time. It's only another 16th of a mile, but it, mm. it changes things. And uh, a lot of horses, you know, aren't crazy about going a mile and eighth. So I went to the ones, there's three horses in this field that have won going a mile and eighth. Those are the three I took. I put Calgary Caper on top, Going back to his uh, form from a couple of years ago, he's really found his legs again at the age of seven. Uh, you know, I like the way that Phil dropped him into an optional 35, got a win, and he's run two really big races. Yeah. He's really going the right direction under Sahin Savachi. Got Calgary Caper on top. I put a highway boss in the second spot, the other Glenn Todd horse. He's won at the distance. He is a horse that finds trouble all the time. And uh, I'm just thinking that extra mile and an eighth could be good for him. He won the S.W. Randall uh, last uh, September, going a mile and eighth by five under Aaron Grider. Absolutely woke up that day. Maybe the mile and eighth will do it for him today. And Crazy Prophet, the other one I have in there, he's run a mile and eighth four times, two seconds, or sorry, two wins, two seconds. Uh, as you mentioned, maybe wasn't crazy about uh, California, but he gets back home to Hastings where all five of his wins have come at. As I mentioned, two of them going a mile on Nathan Amadeo Perez is back aboard him. He won the Classic on him last year. Two years in a row. Yeah, so... Uh, they were always in the fall of the class of the BC yeah, Cup Classic. Yeah, now yeah. they moved it back to BC Cup Day. To BC and, Cup so this could be his third consecutive. We'll going to try for his third consecutive. Yeah. I didn't want to leave him off the ticket. I got four, ten, and nine in the eighth. Good race. On to the ninth, the nightcap. I didn't mark my picks there. I went eight. Oh. Sorry, eight, one. And seven. I went to the eight. He's the reason. Trying to Appalachian Bay's your horse to beat here. Yeah. Uh, his first start here was an absolute abomination. It just so he was like eight wide the whole oh, right. way around there. Only got beat a length and a quarter. He made amends for in his second start here. One by six. Got a seventy-seven buyer. What I tell Alberta, went on the lead in the Count Latham. Got you know relatively comfortable fractions, 24 and 1, 48 and 1. I knew when I saw that 48 and 1, they were not going to beat him, and he generally just ran away from him. 1 by 5. Very nice three-year-old son of Malibu Moon who's going the right direction. But I'm going to try He's the Reason, who's uh, coming off a big second behind Weekend Wizard last time. The fact that Weekend Wizard and him were kind of battling on the head end, and Weekend Wizard just like took off, a lot of times you'll see horses just like fall apart after that. Oh, I love yeah. the way he hung, hung in there, in there yep. and fought Grand on well. and hung on for a second. I thought that was a really gritty performance. We saw Weekend Wizard uh, last weekend running the Emerald Downs Derby and get cooked on the lead. Uh, 22 and 1, I believe they went in. He had like a 50 yeah. to 1 shot with him and still only got beat about a neck or half a length uh, by Sip and Fire, the top three year old down at Emerald Downs. I think he's the reason. Uh, 
you know, being the second best weekend wizard couldn't do the job today. So mm -hmm. if he's the reason on top of Appalachia Bay, any ticket I have, my late uh, pick four or whatnot, is, those are the two I'm going to have. And uh, I threw in Day Raider. Broke his maiden here earlier on this year. Uh, good third behind He's the Reason and Weekend Wizard. Mm -hmm. He's been kind of a no-respect kind of horse. But he's run five times, all five of them in the money. I didn't want to leave him out. What did I go? Eight, one, and seven. Yeah, I went Apalachee Bay. I really like this horse. I think he's the best three-year-old on the grounds. Uh, you know, Weekend I, Wizard's I, I can't really, really good. I, actually, they're, no, I shouldn't say on the grounds. It's it's getting close. Uh, Weekend Wizard still has to be beaten by Apalachee Bay to, for him to be stamped as yeah. maybe the best three-year-old. But they're not going to meet again, I guess, until uh, Til the big day. Uh, the big the big day. Uh, but App Appalachee Bay is a great uh, in his last two starts. Uh, you know, the Count Latham wasn't the toughest stakes race in the world. Over in Edmonton, but uh, he but did he it, made quite, it look easy, yeah. quite comfortably. He's a nice horse, and uh, he's come back to Breeze well, so the ship didn't uh, do him in too much. And I put the eight. He's the reason for second, and I agree with Day Raider for third. Uh, he's the reason's a cool horse too, and he, he he's going to be dangerous. One and eight for me, and then a gap probably back to Day yeah. Raider or Wise Market. I should touch on Wise Market. Nice to see Rocco Bowen in town. Yes. He's riding one for Heath Lawrence in the two-year-old Philly Stakes race, the debutante, and uh, Rocco, former. Oh, he is a leading rider right now at uh, Emerald. The last couple last of years. bunch of years. He's just been killing them down Former there. Former Hastings Park He was here for here. quite a few he years, Rocco. He knows the room here well. Yes, uh, Rocco knows the track well, but it's great to see Rocco uh, in attendance on Monday for our, what is it, the 1995 was the first one, so our 24th. 24th. 24th uh, BC Cup. We were but, just a couple of cups. Yeah, 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 sure we were. I went 1-8-7, and seven, seven. though, in the uh, BC Cup, Sir Winston Churchill. Derby trial. Yes, nice. Almost the longest. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> that'll put that all in the blanket. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> uh, that'll do it for this edition of Handicappers Corner. Wait, 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 I know we're not. We still got that, the recap, but that'll do it for our picks. analysis. Yes. But next up on screen will be our picks, as always. Uh, here we go. First. Back in. Re there we go. Oh, we'll back in race number one. I went to the four. Uh, the chances are going to go four, three, and one. Race number two, I went to the two. Trooper Jenny, going to go two, seven, and three. Race number three, I went to the six. Tiptoe over the four and one. Race number four, I went to the seven. Yukon Bell, I'm going to go seven, four, and two. In the distaff, race number five, I'm going to go to the five. Billy over the seven. Honky Tonk Woman and the four dancing shoes. That's the debutante. Race number six, the marathon, going to go 12, five, and one. Going to go with the 12. Lucky ending. Hopefully it is for the horse. Race number seven, uh, the nursery, going to go seven, eight, and three. Vintage man on top. Race number eight, uh, the BC Cup Classic. Don't hold me back. Hopefully a little minor upset. Going to be maybe Calgary Caper, but it'll be a good race regardless. Two, four, and five. And in the ninth and final, I went to the one, Appalachee Bay over the eight. He's the reason. And the seven, Day Raider. On uh, my picks, there we go. Back in the first, I went to the newcomer. Number three, Brave Nation over the four and the one. In the second, I went to the two, Trooper Jenny. I agree with Mike on Trooper Jenny over the four and the seven. In the third... Real Philly steak. I went to the one, Tony Ann's Miracle over the four, here's Hannah, and the six, Tiptoe. In the fourth, the Distaff. I went to the three, Good Luck to You over the seven, Yukon Bell and the one, Curlish Figure. In the fifth, the two-year-old Philly, the Debutant. I went to the five, Billy over the seven, Honky Tonk Woman and the three, GMT. In the sixth, the uh, Endurance Race, I agree with Mike, number 12, Lucky Ending over the two and the five. In the seventh, the two-year-old boys, I went to the seven, Vintage Man over the eight, Bugsy, and the six, Fantastic. In the classic, the eighth race, I went to the four, Calgary Caper, over the ten, Highway Boss, and the nine, Crazy Prophet. And in the nightcap, the Sir Winston Churchill. Uh, BC Cup, BC Sir Winston Cup, Churchill Derby, Derby trial. trial. I went to the eight, he's the reason, over the one, Appalachian Bay, and the seven, Day Raider. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. It's going to be a great day on Monday. Uh, please do come on yes. out to Hastings. Got lots going on on the day as well. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon. So I was watching uh, some, some of all the best horses at Hastings competing on, on one afternoon. It's pretty exciting. Uh, and uh, yeah, should be a, an awesome afternoon. It's going to, to be sunny. Out. It's going to be beautiful. Get out there. If you only go to the track a couple times a year, this is definitely one there. of the days to go. Yes, uh, and if you can't make it out there, definitely come to the Derby uh, Bar yep. and Grill here in South Surrey. Our next live card will be uh, next Friday, Friday night. night. Will be uh, Friday the whenever that is. That'd be about that the eleventh. That will be the tenth. Tenth, the t Friday the tenth, and then Sunday the twelfth. So we're going back to the Friday yep. Sunday schedule, and then we get into the P and E stuff, which we'll keep you up on. I think it's Fridays and Mondays. But uh, yeah, so our next live card will be next uh, Friday at seven o'clock. On behalf of Drew, enjoy BC Cup twenty four. Yep. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, Thanks for joining us here on Happy Handicappers Corner. We'll see you next time here at the Derby Bar and Grill.
I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can't do. 